and let's go. I'm gonna move us right to this view. So you can just click on train again. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it in JavaScript. You could pick any of these other languages if you'd like. I try and teach in a way that I think you can follow along in your own language if you want to. Sometimes I get into JavaScript syntax, but we do a lot of stuff before that and after that. All right, first thing, read the problem. These are steps that you can follow in an interview. You can adjust them a little bit depending on the process, but basically this is how it goes. So we're gonna read it out loud. Reverse words. Complete the function that accepts a string parameter and reverses each word in the string. All spaces in the string should be retained. Okay, and then they give us some examples. This is an example. And here we see, this is an example. Of course, that's all backwards. One thing I note is that the exclamation mark is counted as part of the word. That's a pretty easy, easy way to deal with that. So we don't need to separate out the exclamation mark and leave it at the end or something like that. One more example, double spaces. And it looks to me that there's two spaces here. Yep, it's a little play on words here. So got to keep a good eye out for that. And here again, we see two spaces with the two words uh, reversed. Okay, so with that, I would tell this problem back to an interviewer in my own words. So I would say something like, okay, it looks to me like in this problem, we're gonna get a string. And what we need to do is reverse every word, taking care to also preserve any spaces that came in that original string. Then I asked the interviewer, does that, does it sound like I'm understanding the problem correctly? Do you see anything that I'm missing? And just wait. I see people really not do this a lot where they just say, okay, the problem says we should do this. So that we, then we go on and just like pause, give the interviewer time to tell you, oh, well, I, I actually, I thought it might be like this, or maybe you're missing this. This is a pretty simple problem. I don't think we're missing anything in my summation, but a typical interview problem is gonna be harder than this. And you will often miss one or more things about the problem that the interviewer will clarify for you. So take that opportunity to wait, see if they wanna clarify anything. Sometimes they won't, sometimes they say, yeah, no, that's it. Whether they see anything else or not, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do and they don't wanna say it. Okay, but at least give them space to talk. Once we've done that, we'll ask any clarifying questions. Um, okay, I noticed that, I might say, I noticed that the exclamation mark is considered part of the word. So is there a chance I might get a comma here? And if that's the case, would I just consider that comma as part of the word? No. We don't have a real interviewer, but that's the kind of question we want to be asking. Uh, yeah, Jordan, that's right. Or no, there's no punctuation except for maybe a period or an exclamation mark, in which case, yes, it just is considered part of the word. Great, fine. Anything else that occurs to you, you want to be asking? This is a pretty straightforward problem. I don't think there's a lot of clarification we need, but something like that would be a good, a good question. Okay, with that then, I'm going to move to the next step, which is create examples. And this is another place where I see many people sort of rush past it. I think this is the most important. And here's how I would do it. I start with very simple cases. So I tell the interviewer, okay, I want to put together some examples to both explore my understanding of the problem and make sure I fully understand it. So I'm thinking the simplest thing I could get here is an empty string. I know I'm going to get a string. There's nothing that says it can't be empty. And if I got an empty string, I would just return an empty string. That makes sense, right? And again, I'll wait for them to respond. Yeah, that, that looks right. Okay, I could get a string with one word. Let's say a simple word like cat. And if that were the case, I don't need to worry about spaces. I just need to reverse this. So it would be like T-A-C. Does that look right to you? Yep, Jordan, that looks right. Okay, great. And I'm gonna slow down if they say, well, I don't, da, 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 whatever. They might say, this is rare. Most, most interviewers are gonna be so impressed if you can build up cases like this that they're just gonna be quiet and happy. They're just gonna watch you do this because they're so excited about it. Um, they might say, hey, we need to like, you know, we don't have a lot of time. So do you wanna do like one more example? Cause like we gotta get into the problem. But I would say that's probably less than 10% and it's actually probably less than 5% of cases. Most engineers know that building up examples that will later become our test suite is one of the hardest things we do in solving a problem and making sure we understand a problem and they will respect this process. However, if they tell me, you know, Jordan, we don't have time for this. Let's, let's move on. Okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, so I could have an empty string. I could have one word. 
Now I could have, you know, something like two words, of course, cat, dog. I used these examples last time, right? Cat, dog. And then I'm not reversing the words, just what's in the words. So here I have cat and then a space and then God. Now, I'm taking that from the fact that this is still in the first place. It's just the word itself is reversed. Does that, does that look right to you? And you're say, yep, yep, that looks right. Okay, now I mentioned before the idea of a comma, and that would be something like, I am well, you? So, this is a slightly more complicated case. And here we say I is the same, am becomes ma, well becomes llew. However, that comma, as I as we talked about, that would actually be considered part of the word. So it would come up here. Then we'd have a space. Then I'd have the question mark u o y. Now, here again, right? Here's where it gets even more important to check in. So you say, that looks kind of funky, but. As far as I understand the problem, I think that's right. Does that look right to you? And again, the interviewer is going to, this, I think, really develops a, an attitude of collaboration in the interview, where the interviewer is going to be like, uh, yeah, 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 you're right. It does look kind of weird. But yeah, that's that's what the problem is asking for. Okay, great. All right. I think I understand that. Um, now, I don't see a ton of edge cases here. I did notice that one has a capital. So I'm actually just going to pull this example right from the problem here. So this is similar in that it has an exclamation mark and it has a capital letter and we get this answer here. So we'll add that on our examples. Um, and then we've got this one with the double spaces. So that's another case we need to consider. And again, I'm just going to pull that example from right here. So double spaces needs to preserve these double spaces. And we'll go ahead and take this answer here. All right, now I have one more case I'm thinking of. and. That would be something like if I had a leading space and then cat and then dog and then like two spaces after that, I could have leading and trailing spaces, right? Let me see. Let me just make sure this is one, two spaces. And the interviewer presumably would say, yeah, yeah you could. Okay. So if that was the case, I would need to have a space and then tack and then another space and then God and then two more spaces without that period there. Does that look right? Yep. Okay. Now we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven examples. And if you've come to my class before, you've heard me say you should probably have between six and eight examples. If you don't have that many, you're probably not exploring the problem thoroughly enough. It feels weird. It feels like I got to get a move on. This person's going to think I can't code. We only have so much time. But some of the hardest work is being done here. You're building a lot of good rapport with your interviewer. And the only thing that's going to get me off this, if the interviewer is like, Jordan, we have really limited time. I'm sorry, we just don't have time to do, to do so many examples. Okay, if that's the case. Again, I'm going to move on. But anything short of that, I'm going to do this exactly. All right. Then I asked the interviewer, okay, I don't see any other cases here. But of course, that doesn't mean there aren't any. Do you see anything that I might be missing? And again, the interviewer might have cases that they just aren't going to tell you about. It happens. But the interviewer is very primed at this point to help you out. They might say, oh, you know, have you thought about this or that or whatever? I, I honestly don't see other cases here, but that doesn't mean they don't exist and doesn't mean that an interviewer might not see them. Do any of you see any cases that I might have missed here that we need to take care of? Okay, well, we'll see as we go. Something else might come up. That's normal. But it's it pretty pretty normal for an interviewer to say, oh, well, you know, I think you Look at the this line in the problem. Did you handle that case? Or should we think about this? Or how about this? Great. I'm going to work that in. Now our examples are done, at least to the best of our ability at this point, with whatever input the interviewer has given. Now we're ready to go ahead and write some pseudocode. So then I tell the interviewer, OK, I'm happy with my examples here. When I go to code this, I'm actually going to use these examples as the basis of my tests for this problem. The interviewer is just going to be like, oh, OK, this is amazing. This person's going to test this is great. They're not, they might be stoic, but they're internally, they're happy. But first, before I do that, I'm just going to sketch out some pseudocode. So if you weren't on Code Wars or a platform that already has the function signature written, the next thing I would encourage you to do is write out this function, the name of the function, and the name of the parameters, parameter or parameters that you're going to take in. 
And then inside of here, we're gonna write our pseudocode. So here is where I'm gonna start describing what I'm going to do in short um, one lines of code, single lines of code that can be turned into actual code. So we think about this and I'm gonna try and talk out loud the whole time I'm with the interviewer. I'm gonna say, okay, so what I'm thinking is if I split on a space, then I'm gonna have an array of each word and then I'm gonna go word by word and reverse it. And then I'm gonna join those back together. Now, the only case that I think is kind of weird is if I have more than one space, how is that gonna affect my array? I'm gonna look at that in just a second. Until then, I'm gonna just say, uh, create a variable, let's call it an array, for each an array with string split on spaces. Then I'm going to iterate through each word. And notice I don't say and then, no, I immediately go to the next line and I indent put my comments back in showing I'm inside of this loop. I don't say if I'm gonna use a while loop, I don't say if I'm gonna use a for loop or a for of loop or whatever iterates in your language of choice. I just say in any language, you're just gonna iterate through each word. Um, in any language, you're gonna create an array or an array like in most languages have arrays. So we would call it array in pretty much any language. Um, might call it a list in some languages. All right, reverse each word. Save the reversed word to the array. Okay, great. That's all I need to do inside of my loop here. River, go through each word. That's what this line's doing. Reverse each word. Great. Save the reverse word to the array or back to the array. Either one is fine. Okay, at that point, I'm going to join on a space. And let's call this um, create variable to hold join on space, something like that. And then we say return string. What are we going to call this? Yeah, something like this. We need to find a way to make sure that this is indicating this here. Um, return string joined on spaces. We could do this in one line instead of two, but we'll try and keep it real clear and do it on two lines. And then again, I'm going to check in with the interviewer. Okay, this is what I'm thinking as my process. Do you see anything I'm missing here? Well, Jordan, what happens if we have more than one space? Hmm, that's a good question. I've used split before in JavaScript, and what it will do when we have two spaces is it's going to create an empty string. So we could theoretically still reverse that string. It wouldn't change. And then when we join it back together, it will, it should, to the best of my knowledge, it should preserve all of those empty spaces, whether they're leading or trailing or in the middle. Great. Awesome. Right. Or, you know what, I'm not sure we'll have to look at it or uh, let's work through it. And uh, when we get there, I'll really take some care with that. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. Any of those I think are good. The better you understand split or what code you're working with here, the more you're going to be able to answer a question like that. Let me just pause here for any questions from any of you guys. Any questions about what we're doing so far, the process, anything? In pseudocode, it's fine to use languages like variable. Like um, yeah, what do you, can you think of an alternative or what else you would call it? Uh, no, but I was just like wondering if, if that's fine, like in pseudocode to, if that would yeah. count as like a goal. Notice I don't name the variable. I don't say what I'm going to call it. But you know, what you could say create variable, you could say save to memory, right? Save to memory, array joined on spaces. You know, that's pretty much creating a variable. I don't think it super matters how you put that. And I certainly don't think there's a problem with this. Um, we could say, you know, create, just like we said, create an array here, we could say create a string. Maybe that's a little more clear since it says the type to hold, hold array joined on space, something like that. Maybe that's a improvement there. Cool. Or create a string variable, something like that would be, I think even better than just create a variable. It's a little bit vague, but I don't think you'd be docked too hard for that by any, any reasonable interviewer. Great. The biggest thing I see here when I'm working with people is when they write out their pseudocode, it sometimes looks like a big fat paragraph, which it shouldn't. 
they sometimes don't indent when they get inside of a loop, which makes it very hard to go back and code this in later. And they do things like reverse each word and save to the array, to which I say this is not wrong. It's just not nearly as readable as just limiting yourself to basically one instruction per, per line. Something that we can pretty one for one turn into code. Our, our goal is like every one of these things should be something that we can reasonably put in one line of code. And it takes practice. It just takes practice, right? It takes practice to get a mindset of how you're gonna solve the problem. And then it takes a whole different type of practice about how to get the clarity to write this out. And you just gotta do it over and over. And it's easiest when you're practicing with a friend or somebody, you can do it on your own and you should. But uh, of course, if you can talk to someone, whether they're a friend or an interviewer or a colleague or whatever, helps helps as well. Great. Okay, with that, then I say, all right. One thing I see here is reverse each word. I could do a helper function there, but it's kind of a simple operation. I think I'm just going to do it in the same function. And I probably wouldn't even check in with the interview on that. But if they said, oh, I'd actually prefer you do a helper function, OK, then I'm going to do a helper function. But if they don't say anything, we're just going to move on. All right. Now, if you're on something like, let me just open this up real quick, since this is, oops. This is a bit of a more common scenario. If you're on something like Replit or CodePad or some environment where you don't have a proper full-on testing suite like we do in Code Wars, what I would do, let me just copy a couple of these things over. Bear with me here. I, I think this is helpful to see. I would have written my examples up top here. I would have my function just like this in here. And because I don't have tests, all I would do is I'd say, okay, the way I'm going to approach this problem is I'm actually going to console log things as I go. Specifically, I'm going to call this function. I'm going to pass in my examples. And again, I'm telling you, if you will follow this, it feels slow. First, you got to practice it and get better at it. But the interviewer almost always would just be like, a gate, like, oh, I can't believe this. This is so good. Um, the process is so good, right? However good you are coding, this process is pretty darn great. And they might quibble with parts of it and they might say, you know, we need to speed up, we need this. Oh, I don't think you should do that. You know, you don't need to write pseudocode, just go straight to the code. Okay, that doesn't take away from the process. It just says that person would like you to skip this or that step. Um, great, so just skip that step and do everything I'm telling you to do without that. And then I say, okay, so this here should evaluate to exactly this here. And I try and get in the habit of just copy and pasting, partly because I'm not that good of a typer, but also because all the work is already done. We don't want to have to retype this or re refigure it out. We did, we did the hard work, just copy it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this like this, and I'm going to see, of course, I expect this to fail since I haven't written any code yet. And with that, I'm going to now go back and write my code. So here, if I were to do this part here, which is like let array uh, we'll just call this words. Let words equals string dot split on an empty space. And then down here, I can skip right to here and I can say return words dot join on an empty space. So with this, this should be basically an empty array. And then we should get back an empty string. That's my hypothesis. And we see true here, right? This, when it's resolved, equals this and creates true. Great. So the same process, you can follow it in pretty much any environment. The one caveat here is if what we're returning is an array, this will not work for equality with an array because even arrays that are exactly the same are not the same. They are not equivalent to each other. This is, I guess, more specific about JavaScript, but this is common in lots of languages. If that was the case, I would just put over here the array I was expecting, and I would drop this part here. And I would say, okay, when I run this, I should see what's commented out over here. But this is so much more graceful that if we can do that, we're going to do that. And we certainly can in this problem here. All right, once I pass this test, I'm just going to copy this line. I'm going to paste it down here, and I'm going to go to this example right here. So I've got now cat, and cat becomes hack, and I'll put that right here, and I'm going to run it again. And I'm pretty much going to run it immediately to make sure that I've got my console log right, that all the syntax is right here, and I see, oh, that's false. Okay, great. Well, that makes sense. I'm not done with my problem yet. 
So here I'm going to iterate through each word. So here I'll do for let word, oops, word of words. And again, our pseudocode doesn't tell us how to write this for loop. It's up to us. And immediately I'm going to make sure I bring my bracket down to encompass everything that's indented that goes inside of here. It's very easy to lose track and you want to make sure you stay on top of those little things so that you don't lose yourself. You're like, wait, where am I? Where am I in the loop? Am I out of the loop? Whatever. Just getting these nice clean habits now. All right, reverse each word. So I want to do something like word equals word dot split on every character dot reverse dot join on an empty string. If you don't know how to do this off the bat, you just need to practice more. This is not something you should have to Google in an interview. Even if you're brand new, I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you did before. I have every confidence you could be a great developer, but you just need to use these methods until you're like, yes, I know them down cold. I can do them in my sleep. This is not something I have trouble with. Um, I have a cheat sheet I'll, I'll get up soon that everybody can see if there's, I don't think you need to know every method in JavaScript, but there's about 45 or 50 that you, you need to know really well. Okay, and now we need to save the reverse word to the array. So I actually think we've already done it right here. Well, let's give it a try and see if it works. And then we'll just drop this line of pseudocode. This is uh, concise enough for me. So let's run it. And we say, mm, that didn't work. It's not enough to go and save word here. We're not gonna be able to do it like that. So why don't we turn this into a different kind of loop? And I will do let i equals zero. i is less than words dot length i plus plus. And here we will say words at i. And here we will say words at i. And let's give it another try and see. And now we see true there. So a for of loop in JavaScript, this is where it gets more JavaScripty, uh, doesn't allow us to easily save um, back to the same array. And I think it's appropriate to save to the same array here. So Again, I just quickly rewrite that loop. This is another thing for like a classic for loop like this, a for of loop, a for in loop. Those need to be like no problem for you. The hard part is pseudocode. The hard part is examples. The hard part is getting in front of a stranger in coding. If, if writing a loop like this is still hard for you, there's no shame in that. It just means you got to practice more. What I typically see on code track is getting to about 850 points is where you start to get that facility with all the basic structures, while loops and for loops and if statements and uh, switch cases and things like that. Not for everybody. Some people need more. Some people need a little bit less. But about 850 points is where I see people get some uh, real facility with those things. OK, with that, I'm just going to leave you. know, I'm going to drop this line. This is doing both of those things. Here, it's reversing the word. And in fact, what I should probably do is save the reverse word to the array. So I'm actually going to keep this line and put it here. Clean up just a little bit and go ahead and delete that. And yeah, we're good there. I like to give ample space as I go. I, I see a lot of developers do this where they're coding like this and nothing wrong with it, folks, but it's just so much easier to read and keep track of. These empty lines don't cost you anything. We can always clean it up later. When code goes to production, it's going to get scrunched down to just the tiniest little variable names. So let's just make it easy for ourselves, for our interviewer, for our future colleagues, for our future self, and give ourselves nice variable names and lots of space. OK, well, that brings us then to our next test. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this one right here. And that is cat dog. Now, I see I made a mistake in this example here, and I left a leading space there. That was not intentional. So I'm going to fix that right now. And let's go ahead and put that, oops, my bad here, put that in here. And then take what we expect back, which is tech and God, and paste that in right here. And let's run it. And we say, boom, we've got everything working fine. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the same thing again. I created a string to hold the array. I could do this, but I think I can just do it in one line here. And I think we're going to be OK. I won't delete this quite yet. Let's do some more tests, but I'm probably just going to delete that. And that's what I would tell. I'm telling you guys, but that's exactly what I would tell an interviewer. All right, here we get to this a little bit more of a funky example. So let me put that one in here. And again, I don't even take the time to try and figure it out. It's like I pretend that someone else completely wrote these. 
unless I think I've got some kind of problem in them. But otherwise, just like, yeah, good, let's run it. And we're going good here. All right, let's do another one. Okay, here we've got, this is an example. Okay, this one came right from the problem itself. So I'm gonna paste that in here. And again, take the result and paste it in here. When I was a new developer, I had a not not a cop not a copy paste habit, and my senior that I was working for, who was a wonderful person, taught me so much about what I know about coding. He was always on my case. He's like, "You need to learn to copy and paste." And I was like, "Dude, I'm being a developer. All right, I'm typing, I'm figuring out logic." He's like, "Just copy and paste." <laughs> and he was on my case for like not a short time, probably more than one year, about just copying and pasting more. He's like. It will save you time in the long run. Every time you'll make less typos, less errors. You'll spend less time hunting down things if you just copy and paste. All right, we're going good here. I'm just going to continue to go through all of our cases, and we're on to our last one. And go there and let's run it. Hey, we're showing all true here. So I did it here just so you can see. You can do it even better on Code Wars because you have the full test suite, but you can do it here. You can do it anywhere. Anywhere you can console log, you can do it just like this. And if it's true, we think that is green. And if it's false, that's red. If this one turns out to be true, but somehow you've broken this one or this one, you go back. And the way I tend to go back is I say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to comment out everything back to where it broke, and I'm going to focus on this broken one. Now, this one isn't broken here, but if that were the case, that's what I would do. Here's what I won't do. I won't do... Oh, you know what? This one's breaking. Let me just comment out this test and then keep going with these and I'll come back to this. The cases, they literally, you can see, they look almost like stairs. They literally go from small to bigger to more complicated, more complicated. And then finally they get shorter, but only because they get weird. So when we get to our weird cases, we can, we call these edge cases, right? Or corner cases. We can say, okay, I'm going to put these in sort of last place, but otherwise we want to work up and we don't want to slide backwards and break this one without just saying stop time to go back and fix that and then build right back up to where we were it's may feel slower at sometimes but i learned a long time ago when i was learning to sail slow is smooth and smooth is fast and you're better off missing an interview here and there which i'm not even sure you will from someone who says they're too slow as you get to be a better developer and get faster and find a team where they appreciate that kind of methodical approach then joining a team where they might be all rush, 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 hurry, 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 which again, that would be such a minority. Most engineers who've spent any time know that it takes time, go bit by bit, you build up and slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Okay, with that, before I do anything else, I'm going to the interviewer and I'm saying, all right, looks like all of these are passing. Do you see anything that I'm missing? One thing is I see myself, I need to go ahead and delete this line. We don't need it. Do you see anything that I'm missing? Now, am I overlooking any parts of this problem? And I'm inviting the interviewer then to help me make some suggestions, anything they might say. And if they say, no, looks good to me. Okay, now often in an interview, we're done here. There is no big submission process, right? They're going to look at our code. They're going to talk to us. They're going to say, hey, you did great today, or I'd like to see more of this or whatever. Of course, if we're on a platform like Code Wars or Hacker Rank or something like that, we're going to have to submit our solution. So once we're satisfied, we're going to go down here. Now, our tests are on the other one. So we'll go ahead and run these tests anyways. We have a few tests here. And we see we passed them all. I'm pretty confident that our examples cover everything. So I'm going to go ahead and click on attempt. And we see, yes, we passed all the basic tests and all the 100 random tests. What we want to see is every time we click on submit or attempt, we get green every time. If we don't, it means we missed cases. And missing cases is should be like, a heartbreak. It's like, oh man, it's okay. You'll get better. So I don't want anyone to feel bad about themselves, but it should be like, that was my job to get every case before I clicked attempt. And if I didn't do it, it just means I need to continue to perfect my approach and my methodicalness about handling problems. Everyone misses cases. I miss cases. You will miss cases now. You will miss cases 15 years into your career. So it just happens, but we work hard not to miss cases. With that, we can go ahead and submit it. Now, I finished this problem, I'm sure, several times before, so I'm not going to get any points for it. But if it's your first time finishing it, you should be able to go back to Code Track and refresh and see your points um, show up. I think you get probably two points for a problem like this. 
Um, so those of you who just set up your, your webhook or whatever, you should be able to see that now. Before we go on to our last problem, let me take any questions. <laughs> 